Um, hi, uh, this is Latsi from Deutsche Telekom Panet, and I'm Jan Gitter from Netrunner. Uh, this talk is about data planes for Contrail or Tungsten Fabric, how to pick them and how to use them in an application. We're going to assume that you've already chosen Contrail as, uh, or Tungsten Fabric as your SDN layer, and you're interested in providing uh, virtual machines, and you want to explore the performance options that are currently available. So on this slide, in the first column, you'll see the um, data plane options that are available to you as a deployer. Um, the kernel vRouter is an out-of-tree kernel module that's similar in function to the open vSwitch kernel module. And it provides a in-tree uh, or an in-kernel data plane. The DPDK vRouter is a user space data plane and it provides partial offload with RTE flow. Um, the VEB refers to a virtual Ethernet bridge uh, for flat or VLAN networks running on an SRIOV-based NIC. And lastly, there are two modes that's available that have full, full offloads, um, direct and indirect plugging. Um, oh, sorry. The third column is what a user would see, a user of the, of the stack. They have access to the VNIC type. When they select a VNIC type of normal, it means that they will, their instances will see a Virti device inside the VM, and no PCI um, devices assume, um, consumed inside the host. If they select a VNIC type of direct, that means a PCI device is passed from the host directly to the guest and isolated there. And finally, there's a VNIC type of Virti forwarder, which means that the, the guest only sees a virtual device, but it's guaranteed to be di um, backed by a physical virtual um, by a virtual function on the host. Um, there's two ways of providing normal VNIC types using Contrail. The first way is using the in kernel um, data plane. And that is that normally means that your data plane and your hypervisor is co-located. With DPDK vRouter, the data plane is isolated because it's in user space, and the it's running busy mode polling, and it has access to partial offloads using RTE flow. Um, a cloud providing direct VNIC support has very little interaction between the hypervisor and the data plane because the data plane is always on the NIC. For a VEB, the data plane is limited to the uh, flat or VNAN networks. And when you're running on smart NIC, you get uh, the, basically the software vRouter data plane running inside the NIC itself. Um, finally, the v, uh, VO, uh, VTO forwarder case is kind of a mix between the two. Um, the data plane is running entirely on the NIC, but you have a small low latency forwarder in user space that ensures that the packets can get to the, VNIC, uh, to the uh, uh, virtual machines, and it's always under a VertIO interface. So how do you choose which data plane to deploy? Um, you should pick a NIC-based data plane if you require low latency and you do not necessarily care about live migration. You can pick a VEB if VLAN segmentation is enough for you. Um, VRouter on SmartNIC is good if you want the SDN, full SDN offloads with overlay and, and uh, connection tracking and, and security policies. Or you can pick a DPDK um, data plane if you're happy with low latency performance and can spare the CPU cores, or if you can, can tolerate um, the added latency if you wish to switch to interrupt mode. And then finally, accelerated interrupt mode has got kind of a mixture of benefits of both of the last two. Um, and then 
The next slide shows when these options appeared in which versions of OpenStack. So the VEB option appeared in Juno, but it's likely that it's only usable in Contrail since Liberty. Um, Netronome provides support for a number of vRotor on SmartNIC solutions. And you can see the different versions of uh, vRotor that we started support with. Uh, you should note that um, Tungsten Fabric 5.1 is still not 100% released yet. Uh, and integration with Stein is still in the pipeline. But other than that, there's still a, there's a number of, of solutions that's already available and you can test. Um, this slide shows the way the development started or the, the release process um, happens. For releases from three to five, we uh, had a trailing release cycle. So Tungsten Fabric and OpenStack released first, and then the offload, uh, offloads were added later. But from 5.1, offloads, uh, direct and indirect, is baked in into master, and you should be able to get access to them earlier for testing. With Tungsten Fabric, you can already start testing them if you want, and supported releases in Contrail will appear a lot earlier. Um, so in summary, um, cloud users should see three VNIC types. That's the direct, indirect, and um, the normal VNIC types. Um, keep, uh, keep in mind, these VNIC types, are, uh, there are many more VNIC types available, and they normally go with things like ironic and bare metal provisioning and a bunch of other scenarios. Um, the semantics are common across to OVS and a bunch of others as well, and um, there's a kind of a trade-off spectrum that you can pick from which one suits you the best. Thank you. I'll hand over to Lutzi now. Thank you, Jan. And for this three minutes as well, but I will try to speed up. Don't worry. Uh, so this is the standard DT slideshow. I don't know these guys, actually. Um, this is the agenda I will try to cover in a couple of minutes. Uh, you can see a short company profile and all the rest. So I don't want to read it because you will see in a few minutes. So Panet is a Dutch telecom company in Europe in six locations with more than 300 employees with a very uh, complex nationalities. And we are trying to provide NFI platforms for Dutch telecom internal usage. This is a kind of mind map how we work day by day. These boxes are not just representing the different uh, areas, but also GitLab projects, which we are using extensively every day for almost everything. I could talk about this for an hour, so let me skip it. Uh, we start with the underlying design. So we are doing the rack design, the server design, and the switch design ourselves. As you can see on the right side that we provide AZs and host aggregates, and you can see the accelerated host aggregate type that you can use in this scenario. We use canonical toolset for different purposes. Mass for metal as a service, Juju for uh, providing our, our model and configuration management tool as well, and Ansible for everything else. So before Juju, after Juju, instead of Juju, with Juju, and so on. The basic components that are not a big, big surprise on OpenStack conference that we use OpenStack. I, I highlight some features that we use or what important on the acceleration topic. The storage has not too much role here, but the network, uh, we use a Contrail SDN, and which is integrated with the smart thing that Jan was talking about. We use infrastructure as a cause, as everyone is trying to do, we as well. So now we have a full running pipeline. We are able to deploy a full open stack with the SmartNix Contrail stuff all together with one long run. Couple of slides, you can see some real comments. Uh, you can see the, I will show you some uh, uh, slides about the port creation, which is very easy. This is, a, this is the standard normal type, so nothing special here. You can use with TCP done all the packets that which is coming in and out from the, on the hypervisor. So what you have to know that you, no surprise here. 
But if you want to have a VDIC type direct, as Jan was talking about, as, as easy as the previous one, you just have to define this uh, port type and you launch the server the same way as before. And in this case, you get uh, actually a virtual function, that's the SRIOV uh, setup. And if you run the same TCD dump as before, this is the full SSA session because you just see the first and the last package that the control plane needs to make decisions. All the rest is happening on the hardware. So this is a nice demonstration how it works in reality. The next type, as you can see, you can create a virtual forwarder type, the same way as before, you just define a different type. Actually, this is my favorite one because here, you can get those SRI-like performance, but the VM has nothing to do with this. So as you see on the next slide, in the VM, the, the, on the bottom you can see a, a direct type, but the virtual forwarder has no clue that it gets an accelerated uh, port. So this is the VPC proof of concept. You can see a couple of different companies was uh, involved. Uh, this is a very complex, took a couple of months, and a couple of hundred use cases were uh, performed on this platform. Uh, this is the VM setup, which is uh, fairly strange. You can see huge VMs, so the, the techo vendors are still, I think you should learn what cloudification means, definitely not this. So anyway, they look at the computer as, as a line card today. And this is a summary. Uh, it's a very long uh, presentation. I just wanted to highlight a couple of uh, findings that relate really to the usage of the SmartX. Again, we, we could use the, we prefer to use the virtual forwarder VNIC type, which is almost SRIOE, but with the flexibility of a, of a standard port, and uh, we can get uh, extreme performance out of this. Thank you.